Welcome back, dear children, to our EVS class. So today we will be seeing our first chapter in science. The heading of the chapter is Plants, the Food Producers. Now you are all at home, right? So you eat healthy food so that you can have immunity power and resist corona. So we all need food for growth and repair of our body. Okay, food is needed for growth and repair of our body. But does all living organism prepare food by themselves? No, right? Only plants are able to prepare food by themselves. Can human beings or animals prepare? No. So, plants are able to prepare food by themselves because of the presence of a green color pigment. What is it? Because of the presence of a green color pigment which is called your chlorophyll. What is it called? Chlorophyll. So plants prepare their own food because of a presence of a green color pigment which is called chlorophyll. Okay. So this chlorophyll is present in the leaves. Where is it present? In the leaves. Okay. So now first we will see the function and structure of a leaf. So let me show you a leaf. So you know this is a leaf. What is the color of the leaf? Green. Yes. So this green color is due to the presence of the pigment called chlorophyll. Okay. Now can you see a broad line which is passing through the center? Yes. So this broad line is called your main vein. What is it called? Main vein. And you can see small lines passing through this and this is called your small vein or side vein. Okay. You have a main vein and side veins. Is it clear? Now you know this is flat and this is called the leaf blade. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. You take a leaf when you see to the underside of a leaf, okay, you can just peel off the skin of the leaf and when you keep it under a microscope, you can see few small holes, okay. When you keep it under a microscope, you will be able to see tiny openings, okay, under the leaf surface. These tiny openings are called stomata. What are they called? Stomata. Okay. These tiny openings in the undersurface of a leaf are called stomata. So these stomata help in giving out gases. Okay. So stomata. So stomata helps in breathing and transpiration in plants. Is it clear? Okay. Now your leaf has three main functions. How many functions does your leaf has? Three functions. Okay, they have three work or three tasks to be done. The first one is called for preparing food. Yes, what is the first one? For preparing food. Okay, your first function is prepare food. So how does it prepare food? Yes, it prepares food with the help of which pigment? Chlorophyll. In the presence of you need sunlight, water and carbon dioxide. We will be uh, learning about this in detail. Okay. So now first function of a leaf is for preparing food. Okay. Next second function is for breathing. What is the second function? Breathing. Okay. Because we told stomata is present. It helps in breathing or exchange of gas. And your third function is some leaves store food. Okay. Some leaves are able to store the prepared food. Such leaves are your leafy vegetables like your cabbage, juice, spinach. All these are called your leafy vegetables. So the third one is for storing food. Is it clear? So these are the three main tasks or function of your leaf in a plant. Okay. Is it clear children? Okay. Now we shall see the next process which is called photosynthesis what is the next process called photosynthesis 
So what is photo? Light, isn't it? Photo refers to light. And synthesis refers to mixing up everything together. So photosynthesis is the process of preparation of food by the plant. Okay, what is photosynthesis? Preparation of food by the plant. Okay, in that you need four essential elements. So when you have your lunch or your breakfast, you have mix of food, right? If you have idli, sambar, chutney, okay? In the same way, for photosynthesis to occur, there are four main elements, okay? The first one is called your chlorophyll. What is the first element? Chlorophyll, very good. The second one is called carbon dioxide. What is the second one? Carbon dioxide. Your third component or third element is sunlight. What is your third element? Sunlight. Okay. And your final element, fourth one is water. What is the fourth element? Water. Okay. So these are the four main things which is needed for photosynthesis. Okay. So first one is chlorophyll. Where is this chlorophyll present? In the leaves. Okay. So chlorophyll is the green pigment which is present in the leaf. Next, carbon dioxide. So from where do the plants get carbon dioxide? Yes, from the air. Okay. Or from the atmosphere. What we breathe out. Okay. What we breathe in is called oxygen and what we breathe out is carbon dioxide. Now the third one is sunlight. So obviously you get sunlight from the sun. And the final one is water. So water, you, the plants receive water from the soil through their roots. Okay. So with all these, they prepare their food. Okay. So the food prepared by them is called starch. What is it? Sugar or starch. What is the food prepared by them called? Sugar or sugar. Okay. So this sugar is prepared in the leaf. And they are transported to different parts of the body through the stem and branches. Is it clear? So when this sugar is stored, when we have our food, we will not use the whole energy of the food at the same time, right? So a plant uses some amount of prepared food to carry out its life process and remaining will be stored. Okay, they will not use it at a stretch. So the remaining will be stored and that stored food is called your starch. Okay, is it clear? The, uh, the food what is prepared during photosynthesis is in the form of sugar. And when it is stored for a longer period, it is called starch. And another byproduct, that is when all this combines together, they give you sugar plus oxygen. What is the next product you get? Oxygen. So that oxygen will be given out through the stomata which we will be respiring or taking in. Is it clear children? So this is photosynthesis. And this uh, sugar is stored in plants and different organs like fruits, your mango, okay? In leaves, your spinach. Sometimes this sugar may be stored in the stems. Example, your sugar cane. And sometimes it may be stored in the root, like your carrot, radish, etc. Okay, so this is how your photosynthesis takes place. Is it clear? Now we shall see some amazingly different plants. Okay, we told plants help leaf where photosynthesis takes place. But have you heard about the plants which grow in desert? Yes, cactus. Do they have leaves? Yes, but they are in the form of spine. The leaves are reduced in the form of spine in which plant cactus. Okay, this is because in deserts you have minimum amount of water or the water scarcity will be there. So, to reduce the transpiration, okay, what is transpiration? Loss of water. So, in order to reduce the transpiration, cactus plants the leaves are reduced to spine. Okay. So the transpiration will be less. And have you heard about mushrooms? Yes. Do they ha have any green color pigment in them? No. 
then how do they get food yes they get food from the dead and decayed materials okay they get food from the dead and decayed plants and animals which is in the ground okay so the another type is mushrooms okay so they are called saprophytes what are they called saprophytes okay now each and everything is dependent on each other okay there is a flow of energy so the energy flow starts from the plants so these plants will be taken by some herbivorous animals what is herbivores yes the plant animals which eat only plants those animals example is your deer so that animal will be eaten either by human beings or by carnivorous animal what is carnivorous the animals which eat only the flesh of others herbivores herbivores are called your plant eaters what are they called plant eaters next one is your carnivores what is the next one carnivores carnivores are the flesh eating or they eat other animals like your lion tiger and the animal which eat both plant and animal okay they are called omnivores what are they called omnivores and an example for omnivores is human beings is it clear so we are human beings are called omnivores because we eat both plant products as well as animal products okay so now each and every one are dependent on each other is yes or no so plants prepare the give us the food they give us fruits leaves vegetables we eat isn't it and in the same way they give us oxygen we take in oxygen we breathe in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide which they use for photosynthesis is it clear children so with this we came to an end of your first lesson so shall we have a recap once again okay so what are plants called they are called the food producers they are produce they produce food because of the presence of a green color pigment which is called chlorophyll okay where is this chlorophyll present in the leaf and under side of the leaf you have small opening or tiny openings which is called stomata okay now the next process uh, now you have three functions of your leaf what are the functions of leaf preparing food breathing and storing food now we shall see what is photosynthesis so photosynthesis is preparation of food by plants using chlorophyll carbon dioxide sunlight and water okay so after when all these are mixed together you get the product sugar when this sugar is stored for a longer period it is called starch and another by product in this process is oxygen now you have different forms of energy the first one is called herbivores herbivores are plant eaters next one is carnivores they are called flesh eaters and the person who eats both flesh and plant are called omnivores example is human beings is it clear so with this today's class is over take care children be safe thank you